Welcome to Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on S3. So we need to have a conversation around communication. And I think it's very, very important for us to look at non-verbal communication or social cues and how uh, they play a crucial role in our interactions with one another. And also different actions can have different meanings in different spaces, which makes us wonder how good is your ability to read social cues, particularly when it's time to leave a certain gathering. We mentioned this in Spill the Beans. I mean, is it okay to just leave a gathering? But it's uh, got to be something we can pick up on. So we've got a panel of just esteemed individuals. We've collected the Avengers of people who know how to identify social cues. We've got Kavashni Governor, a clinical psychologist. We've got, we've got Mini over here, content uh, creator. We've got Hedeka as well, uh, Nondomiso, aka Vegan Attempts. I mean, we've got everybody. We have everybody here to make sure that you are well equipped. So ladies, first and foremost, welcome. Thank you. Sorry, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank See what I did there? It's a social cue. It means that I've brought you in <laughs> and I'm opening myself up to you on a behavioral level. I mean, that's the thing. So body language is very, very big. But let's chat to you first. Hello, Hi. Kavashni. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to social cues, it basically means body language. Now, there's a stat around body language being like 90% of communication, all right? I, I, don't quote me on that. So in terms of reading them, do you think that enough people understand them? Or do you think sometimes we're just oblivious and we keep on going? Well, there's, there's lots of research that suggests, so there's different bodies of kind of thought. One yeah. is that um, we're, we're born with it. We're hardwired in that way. Um, it's evolutionary based, so we all have it. However, things can go wrong. Yes. Um, um, certain disorders, certain difficulties can stop us from being able to express or even interpret social cues. And that's where we see the difficulty with interpreting and expressing social cues. Let's get into interpretation. Mini, when it comes to interpretation, I mean, how good are you at actually picking up social cues? Can you tell if somebody is into something, about to leave, angry with you? I mean, how good have you become in your time? For me, it's definitely um, something that is a skill up my sleeves because <laughs> <laughs> one thing, anxiety yeah. and overthinking is like my middle name. So most of the time, I am just overthinking on what someone is thinking about me yeah. saying in their mind. So I've actually mastered it in, to a sense where sometimes, you know, everything you've planned for someone doesn't really, yeah. you know, come out right because you're already seeing them disinterested if, um, you yes. know, if they're around you, you see them that they're not, you know, into what you want yeah. them to be into. So, yeah. So, Hadeka, when it comes to social cues, I mean, sometimes you, you may miss them yeah. and you may just be oblivious and you can, con you know, continue going, etc. So, have you ever been in a situation where somebody was kind of telling you something but then you kind of completely avoided it because... You know, maybe the brain just said to you, hey, I'm not going to focus on this right now. If you're not into it, deal with it. You're here now. Yeah. Have you ever been in that situation? Yes, I have. Ooh. I have many times. But one thing about the people in my space, they, yeah. we, we have created um, a space where we are able to, to, to communicate about things. So in that instance, he was, he was a male. So he told me, like, um, men, I don't appreciate the fact that you are missing the cues. I've been trying to show you, like, I don't appreciate... Um, what you're doing, and I had to quickly learn that these these feelings are important, and I have to honor the the, the 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 expression that he's trying to show to me, and that he doesn't appreciate that. And I had to learn that wow. someone sometimes that doesn't even have to say that because I had to learn in the moment, but I could not. I missed it out until he had to say to me that, man, I don't appreciate that. So I had to like, okay, no, I'm sorry about it. next time. Ooh. I'm gonna have to read the body language. I'm gonna have to read the whole person. You wow. know, yeah. No one gave you a pamphlet to read it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's very unfair yep. yeah. for someone to expect that of you. Yeah. But uh, let's go to vegan attempts. It's interesting to see you outside of the kitchen now and putting on the other hat, content creation hat. But I feel I actually want to tap into your law lecturing hat. How's that, man? Oh, my. Hey? Well, it's interesting to be on the other side of, uh, you know, as, as you say, I'm a lecturer. Yes. So, um, it's interesting to see how over the years students become less and less able to actually read social cues. And they say it has something to do with the fact that, you know, the Gen Z's generation, they are most of the time on the phone. Yeah. So they really get, they don't get, they haven't been getting as much practice in yes. social interaction. So it's it's interesting to see how they, even the student body evolves. I'm very good at reading social cues because of my, it's my job. I'm yeah. required to. But I notice my students over the years are becoming less and less able to read social cues. It's very Because, I mean, you're still 
students, obviously, this is the one you know a lot of. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> and, and they can't tell when, you, when, yeah. when they've been talking for too long, for example. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go point form, Kavashni, with regard to reading social cues. Uh, you know, are there any tips, to, things to look out for? I mean, just anecdotal tips that we can look out for when we're trying to understand and being better at, you know, reading the room, so to speak. Mm -hmm. What type of things should we be looking for? Yeah. I think really important to start off with is that all of us have um, mannerisms, we yeah. have behavioral patterns and quirks. Yeah. Um, and this is our baseline. Um, so, for example, if someone is introverted and naturally shy, um, that would be their base, baseline. Yes. However, if someone's open and like you and warm and engaging and one day we, we come across you and you're not, that would be, a, you know, a deviation. Ah. So, so in terms of, um, you know, reading people, one of the most obvious things is people's appearance. And we call them identity claims. So people okay. will tell you a bit about themselves by just by how they dress. For example, um, they'll wear a T-shirt with maybe a slogan. Maybe they're affiliated to a certain movement. Um, oh. They might be a necklace with a religious, you know, yes. um, sign that will be tell you about their faith. Or they might have tattoos. They might have tattoos will, which will tell you about who their loved ones are. The other yeah. thing we look out for is posture. If you walk in and your head's high, you're confident. If you walk in and you kind of, it says something about your level of confidence. Um, and the other thing which is really important yes. is, unless you've mastered the art of a poker face, it, all your feelings are going to be expressed uh, in your face. Okay. It's going to show everything. Um, okay. So there's a very, very good cues to work with now. We're yeah. going to marinate in that for a second because we need to have you back for a part two. But I feel like what you need to also understand is that there are social cues when it comes to any gentleman dressed in a flamenco outfit. You need to find out what they're actually trying to tell you, and this is it. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here in S3 and we're continuing our conversation around reading social cues and some of us are stragglers, missing flags when presented but we can all get a little better and that's why we've got a clinical psychologist, Kavashni, here. We also have a panel of individuals to weigh in as well throughout an array of different content creation and law lecturing jobs to make sure we are good to go but let's go through the panel and start off with Queen Mini. Yes, <laughs> so there we go, we're back to Queen Mini. Do you know when you take somebody out and it's a place that you like, but they perhaps don't like it, but they want to be good to you because you've taken them out, so they want to be polite. But they're trying to show you that they're trying to be polite, but they don't really like the place. They're trying to show you on a, a body language level that they're not feeling it. Have you ever been in that scenario? And what behavioral cues have you picked up from them that they weren't feeling it? I definitely have. All right. And uh, it was cringe <laughs> because Sometimes, most of the time when I take someone to a place, it's something I'm excited about, yes. something I'm looking forward to, seeing their facial expressions, enjoying what I enjoy. However, it doesn't always go well. So yeah. I took someone to um, a very nice uh, event, which was like more of like a market, flea market kind of nice. vibe. And I thought they were going to have fun, yeah. but um, it was more of like a traditional African-themed vibe. So they didn't like that. So I, they, were, they just didn't like the wood. They didn't like the everything. They just the didn't. <laughs> they just not a woody person. <laughs> they were just like, no. They like the wood. <laughs> yeah, she, she kept on saying, oh, friend, you know, I'm not into wood. I'm like, well, it's just antiques. And she's like, mm, I'm not a woody girl, but yeah, I like it. So the social cues that I picked up yes. is that, you know, every time I pointed at something that, oh, look at that, she'd be like, okay, it's nice. But uh, that face uh, was not that, giving. Mm. It's very nice. I'm like, listen to the music. She's like, mm, it's nice. What are they saying? And so it was cringe all the time. I'm like, girl, you don't want to be here. Yes. She's like, no, I don't want to, you know, hurt your feelings, but I really don't. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Hideka, just in terms of, are there any telltale social cues that are just like, body language-wise, physically, where you know somebody is not into the vibe that you know that it's in your pocket and you know when you see it, it's time to go. Yep. My favorite place, the face. Yeah. The face is the most important. Eye roll. See. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it, like it covers everything. Besides everything else, the face. You look at the face and yes. you see that, nope, the person is not interested and that's it. Uh-huh. Mm. How about this? Let me flip it over, right? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Vegan attempts. Okay. You're a law lecturer as well. You have to read people all the time. Yeah. Are there telltale signs on a social level when somebody is actually into it or even into you? Oh, 
it's always they always make eye contact and nod i think when my students are they're interested they actually care about what i have to say they'll actually look at okay. me and they'll actually engage but if they're not then they're always looking down mm. they're trying to type or you know they, okay yeah so, so that's easy cues as well. Easy cues, very simple. And then a quick one, to read somebody who perhaps, Kavashni, from a clinical psychology perspective, if somebody is not feeling it, we want to be sensitive to them as well. Mm. Are there any tips and tricks just to make sure that they feel comfortable and that they feel heard? Yeah. Um, I think someone, for example, with like social anxiety disorder. Yes. Um, some of the things we would see is poor eye contact, um, not open posture. Uh -huh. They would kind of turn away from, you know, yes. the group. Um, things we could do is to reassure, um, check in with them. Um, are you feeling okay? Yeah. Um, maybe um, to ask them to have an individual conversation, kind of, you know, help include them, warm them up, and then include them back into yes. a group space. Um, so lots of reassurance. Nice. Um, and, yeah, I think reassurance is key. Reassurance, just so that they can feel that they've been heard, and that's yeah. the most important thing, because, you know, not everybody's going to fly a flag and say, hey, I have social anxiety. So mm. sometimes it's very important to pick up on a social cue. Thank you very much to everybody on this panel. You are Thank all you. phenomenal. And, of course, let us all pick up on social cues, because they can assist us, they can help us, and also they can get us going home if one of our friends does not want to be at an event and doesn't like wood. Anyway, <laughs> that's where we're going to leave it oh. for now. Thanks a lot for joining the conversation. Oh. Let's have a, a good cuppa with the boys.